it's me again. I know it's been a bad month or so, but you know, it's not as bad as my last break was, so yay! You know, thank you, Lucas Stars. Anyway, this was a very, very tough day because pretty much everything about Chuck is, for want of a better word, it's freaking awesome. From, you know, so many amazing characters, amazing stories, really, you know, and the way that all fell together with the, you know, everything just works, you know, the romance, the comedy, the tone changes that you know, expect at all. It just works. Nonetheless, these are the ten episodes of Chuck that stand out the most, in my opinion. Here they are. Oh, fair warning before I start. There will be tons of spoilers on this list. So either turn this off now or pause it and, you know, go and watch Chuck, like all of Chuck, there's about five seasons, and then come back here and see what you think. I don't know. Or not come back here, just enjoy Chuck and have your own opinion. That's up to you. Anyway, enough of my useless uh, ramblings. Uh, let's get it on with Donkey Kong. Number 10, Chuck vs. Tom Sawyer. Season 2 was easily the highlight of the Chuck series in general, and while this isn't the most acclaimed episode in most people's minds, it's easily the nerdiest in the show, and without a doubt one of the funniest. In this episode, we find out a bit of backstory to the creepy nerd herder Jeff Barnes, who, as it turns out, was a former champion of the classic arcade game command. Also in the episode, it turns out that someone is using the arcade classic to use real light missiles in a hope to blow up the whole planet. No, because bad guys can't just do things simply. Jeff can't step up the pressure. It's up to everyone's favourite nerd, aka Jeff Bartowski, to go to the much rumoured kill screen to save everyone. And to reach this kill screen, all Chuck has to do is play the game to tune of the And it just results in an awesome episode with some absolutely hilarious moments. Number 9, Chuck vs. the Nacho Sampler. Season 3 was seen as the darkest in the history of the show, and it's not a but this episode in particular showed that Chuck was on the teetering point between Spider and normal guy. So at the end of the second season, Chuck downloaded the Insect 2.0, which not only gave him more government secrets in his head, but also gave him new abilities like fighting style, speaking different languages, and even ballroom dancing and guitar playing at one point. But let's focus more on the episode. To prove that he was a real spy, Chuck would have to bang an asset. By the this means that Chuck had to make friends with the name Manouche to get something from him, namely a phone from that season's bad guys, known as The Ring, as well as Minushi's uncreated insect that he made all in his lonesome. The fact that Chuck showed absolutely no mercy for Minushi whatsoever during his burn showed just how dark the series could get, and easily makes for not only a standout moment, but in my mind, makes for a standout episode in general. Season 5 was the shortest in the history of the show, as well as being the last series of Chuck. That doesn't mean it didn't have its funny episodes, in particular, this one. Throughout the series, Chuck and his wife, Sarah, ah, lovely Sarah, tried to start up their own technology firm in Carmichael Industries, but they don't really have the money or the means to get it done. So along comes Gertrude Kabansky, the head of the Nautica Club, and the main love interest of everyone's favourite soldier, John Kitty. In this episode, Gertrude more or less tells Team Bardowski a secret mission, but it turns out it's just a vacation, which he's never taken due to the fact that he works pretty much all the time. And as a result, the big fella goes nuts. Luckily, Gertrude comes to and I really don't need to tell you how disturbing that is. But it makes for some more comedy, and there's even more hilarious meta moment when Sarah comments on all the skimpy costumes she's had to wear over the years, and she, she tells Casey not a bitch about it. Hilarious episode, and just pretty good, all in all. Number 7, Chuck vs. The Alma Mater. Let's kick this back a notch. Season 1 was still very much an introductory period for the show, and while it focused on shedding light on its title character, not a lot was known about Chuck except for the fact that he was kicked out of Stanford, got done by his girlfriend, and then was betrayed by his one of his former best friends. That was until this episode. Team Bartowski gets briefed by General Beckman about one of Chuck's professors at Stanford and a data disc that the good professor possessed. Chuck declined to go due to his poor history with Stanford, and he declines again when he's asked by his sister Ellie and her boyfriend Devon, better known as Captain Awesome, for good reason, to attend a football game, as well as to possibly get some closure from Stanford. But Chuck finally decides to go when he finds his old student ID and flashes on himself. Taking Sarah and Casey with him for the mission, the episode results in some absolutely amazing humour and gives a perfect amount of backstory to the character of Chuck, as well as the absolutely hilarious subplot of the boy more worker staging a revolution against assistant manager Harry Tang to steal his universal notes. Brilliant episode, what more can I say? Number 6, Chuck vs Santa Claus. 
For the majority of the show, Chuck's super secret spy life had to say super secret, and Chuck did a pretty good job of protecting everyone around him, despite the fact that he had to lower his face to do so as well. This Christmas slash Die Hard themed episode was the closest that Chuck's friends and co-workers at the Bymoor got to real danger. In the episode, a low-life criminal named Ned drives into the Bymoor literally and takes everybody there hostage. Also starring Michael, Bill Dixon Rooker as a full agent pretending to be an LAPD agent named Frank Moser, Michael's character actually tactically worked his way up to Chuck, even going so far as to hand over Sarah and Casey as hostages to get closer to our favourite nerd. It turns out that Ned was actually a full agent himself, and he called Frank in once identified Chuck as the intersect. At the end of the episode, Chuck went to a Christmas tree light after his original course to go to a Falcon holding facility was diverted by Casey and Sarah. Yay! Sarah and Moser have a fight in the lot, and to protect Chuck, Sarah kills Moser, not knowing that Chuck was watching from afar in horror. Sarah then lied directly to Chuck's face by saying that Moser got arrested, easily ending the episode with one of the series' darkest moments yet. Yet it's the surprisingly sweet moment where Chuck gives Sarah a bracelet that used to belong to his mom that stands out the most. Aww. Number 5. Chuck vs. The Intersect Oh come on, you just know that I had to put the very first episode of the show in here somewhere. Go on. With the series that gotten as far as it had, if not for an absolutely awesome debut, Chuck vs. The Intersect does a great job of introducing us to the characters that we come to know and love, and some of the characters that we hate, as well as setting up the show's first season perfectly. In the episode, Chuck is seen as a pretty down on his luck type of guy, kicked out of Stanford, dumped by his ex, betrayed by one of his best friends. It's needless to say that things weren't going too well for the dude. This was the case until his former best friend, Bryce, who's actually a spy, sent Chuck a boatload of government secrets as a last resort via the text based OPG game Zork. Not knowing what he was getting into, the captain of the nerd her desk made the reply to his former friend in the game. And then he accidentally got a bunch of government secrets downloaded into his brain, which results in him being a CIA asset. This episode is truly an amazing day for the series, and it really gets things going. Number 4, Chuck vs. The Other Guy. Oh, this episode. I love this episode. I love this episode so much. While the build-up to it was a bit jerky, that doesn't make it any less awesome. In prior events, we discover that Daniel Shaw, played by Brandon Ruth, was once happily married before his wife was killed. And that's not to mention the fact that Casey was decommissioned by General Beckman for interfering with the most important part of Chuck's spy life, the Red Test. Now, what a red test means in the spy is pretty much you have to earn your first kill as a spy. But in an earlier episode, when Chuck could not pull the trigger, he stepped in, telling Chuck to keep it a secret, which led to a lot of hatred from Sarah, who didn't know about it. Luckily, Casey tells the truth, and Sarah forgives Chuck, finally admitting her love for him in the episode. Yay! But I can't help but think that I'm forgetting something. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's it. It turns out that Sarah killed Shaw's wife for her own red test, and when Joe finds out, he kills Sarah and holds a hostage, which forces Chuck to cross a line he swore he'd never cross as he shoots and supposedly kills Shaw. But, well, I would say don't worry, because it's Shaw. But, yeah, he comes back. And also, luckily, Casey gets reinstated and Sarah forgives him the next morning, which leads to the two finally getting together. See? I told you I love this episode. Number 3. Chuck vs. The Cliffhanger. The previous entry proved that would go so far as to kill as to protect the people he loves, then this episode just proves how much further he's willing to go than that. Throughout season 4, Chuck and Kyle had to deal with Volkov Industries, the head of which is Alexei Volkov, played to absolute perfection by Timothy Dolan. Anyway, in the previous episode to this one, Chuck gets the intersect taken away from him. You'd think that would be bad enough, right? But unfortunately, Sarah gets poisoned by a deadly weapon, some douchebag named Decker who is higher up on the CIA ladder cancels Operation Potesky, and Volkov remembers that he's actually a man named Hartley Winter. A man who once worked alongside Chuck's father on the Intersect project. When Chuck is down to his last chance of having to make a deal with Alexei's daughter Vivian, played by Lauren Cohen, it just proves how far Chuck is willing to go, even if he has no choice but to go alone and save the one he loves. Thankfully, it all pans out in the end as Chuck and Sarah get married, yay, and they give a large sum of money by Holly, double yay, and the episode closes out with Chuck's best friend Morgan accidentally downloading a new Intersect. Um, yay. Number 2, Chuck vs. The Colonel. Now this is generally regarded as the best Chuck episode yet. And I can see why. In an earlier episode, Chuck, Chuck discovers about his father Stephen Bartesky, played by Scott Bakula, and also discovers where he is. And Chuck goes on his own hunt to find him against all orders and all odds, with Sarah going alongside him. When Batman finds out that Chuck and Sarah have gone AWOL, the good general decides to take them in, giving them the chance to be promoted from his then position of Major to Colonel if he finds them. What results is an absolutely perfect blending of humour, action, romance, 
and a pretty amazing cat and mouse game. Not to mention Chuck and Sarah's Jess in the hotel, which was the closest that the two got to being together in season two. In the meantime, bad guy Ted Robb, played by Jeffrey J. demands that Chuck's father Steve and fish a new version of the Intersect, which would later become the Intersect 2.0. And it goes perfectly hand in hand with this boring subplot, where Morgan becomes a social pariah after watching Lee getting storm manager Big Mike fired in favour of Emmett Mulbarge. An absolutely amazing episode, and I can see why so many people like it so much, but it just doesn't be my own personal number one. Number one. Chuck versus the Beard. You know those spoilers I mentioned in the intro of my video? Yeah, you knew what you were getting into at the beginning, so don't blame me for this one. In the episode, Chuck is benched by Shaw as he shows that he can't operate the insect properly due to his emotions from the previous episode when he broke up with his girlfriend Hannah, played by Christine Crook. After the rest of Team Wodowski goes to investigate a hotel where the Ringo are attempting to turn a CIA agent, they discover that it was a decoy and they come across Captain Awesome, who they found out about Chuck's spy life in Season 2. We find out that the ring did this on purpose just to draw Shaw out, and this leaves Chuck completely all on his own in Castle. Morgan meanwhile follows Chuck to the whereabouts of Castle, which is the secret base of operation for Chuck and friends. When the bad guys who masquerade as interviews to check on the customers of the Bymore find out about Castle, they tie Morgan and Chuck up together, leaving no choice but a favourite note to spill the beans about who he really is, which leads to an awesome reaction from Morgan. Also alongside a hilarious subplot with the Bymore employees staging a revolution just to keep their jobs, Team Bartowski brings Morgan into the fold, and the episode in general is just amazing and perfect in my opinion. Not to mention an awesome directorial debut by Zachary Levi. So there you go, that was my top 10 Chuck episodes. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll uh, be working on something soon. I hope that the next video comes out sooner than this one did. And uh, thank you all for watching, uh, all, what, 10 of you? I don't know. And I'll see you all next time.